There's no place like home. Hi there, and welcome to Home Wizards. We love to improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stroman. And we love to go to these trade shows to help you navigate your way through um, your various wish lists for the home. Now, it almost it almost becomes like uh, you know consumer reports because we see things, we test them, we also talk to some of the guys mm-hmm. from Consumer Guides mm-hmm. and find out what their mm-hmm. opinions are. And I think we're starting to really understand what works, what doesn't, what we love, what what's not great. We're your shopping guy. Yeah, we are. We're your personal shoppers. Yeah. And did someone say shopping? What? Don't say that around I'm there. you. Look at how you perked up. I oh, know. Man. Well, and there was a lot of bling for the house that we saw uh, for for your you know the space you call home, inside and outside, all kinds of cool things. So let's take you first to. It's all about technology, you know. It's all about combining technology from room to room when it comes to lighting and entertaining, energy efficiency. And so we spoke with the folks at Leviton to see what's new and what you may be looking for. We have universal dimmers and universal sensors. Uh, We call them universal because they can control a wide variety of lighting loads, incandescent, dimmable CFLs, dimmable LEDs. We've taken that uh, universal dimmer platform and added it to sensors. So if you're in California, you'd be concerned with Title 20, Title 24. We now have universal sensors that are uh, Title 20 and Title 24 compatible. We also have a dimming sensor that allows you not only to take uh, advantage of the benefits of an occupancy sensor or vacancy sensor, but you can dim the lighting load as well. Now, we're not just in California. We're in many states. So So we have products that that are compatible outside of California. In California, it's a manual on requirement. The other states around the country, it's an automatic on product. Got it. Got it. We also have a brand new, incredibly popular USB receptacle. It allows people to not have to rely on the transformer that comes with an iPad or other tablets or a uh, BlackBerry or other smart products. You can replace an existing receptacle and then plug in, thanks to a small USB cord that's provided by the manufacturer of your device, right into the outlet. It's a great looking product. Uh, Again, it solves the problem of lots of wires being uh, strewn across a kitchen counter, for example, or in a bedroom, wherever you might be charging your devices. Our product also has a smart chip. It detects what device is being charged and it recognizes that device immediately and knows what level of charge, how many amps it requires, and it charges faster than the manufacturer's own provided transformer. Jeez. So talk a bit about also that you have a nice little panel here set up showing all the different products, a little demonstration. You have energy management, safety and security, entertainment. First, in terms of energy management, that's basically giving us what? We're helping to save money, obviously, and, and save power. We, but how? We have a large display of our HAI by Leviton products. And what's Some HAI? Home Automation, Inc. It's a company that we acquired, so we've added our name to the end. HAI is uh, widely recognized as a leader in home automation. We have a number of products here. One of the things that I'm most fond of, you can tie together energy management, safety and security, and entertainment. Let me give you one example. We have a key fob that allows you to lock your door when you leave for work, say, in, in the morning. Thanks to this technology, automatically your thermostats will change because the thermostats are smart and they know that you've just left the premises. Your alarm system will be armed immediately. Again, thanks to that key fob, all of these previously independent systems are now integrated and work together. On the facing side of our exhibit, we have uh, smart grid thermostats. So you're able to, again, tie in that system so that periodically you can program during peak periods of demand. You can have, say, for example, your central air conditioning uh, compressor turn off deliberately. That way you can uh, relieve 
the demand that might be uh, present in a community during peak periods. And the, and the control is your, your car or key fob only, or is there also an app through your there smartphone There is an device? app. That's a great question. So <laughs> I we mentioned, have nothing but great questions. Just so I know. see that. <laughs> So the key fob was a manual uh, operation. You can take a smartphone and you can control any of these devices remotely. So uh, HAI's headquarters happen to be in New Orleans, Louisiana, and any one of the gentlemen or ladies here who are from HAI can demonstrate for you on, say, their uh, Samsung phone or on an iPhone that you can uh, turn off the lights in their offices, you can change the thermostat so you can warm or, or cool the office. Uh, I've heard that they've actually played pranks on colleagues where they will change the lights in the office remotely. Sure, it's I can see that. Product. I can see almost like a little war. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's That's on. right. It can be very entertaining, actually. <laughs> it's like a couple, like, I'll show you. Exactly. The lights are going off. Exactly. <laughs> I have that battle over the thermostat all the time with my husband. You well, know? You, if you see? get this product, you can uh, have the, the same battle with going him. up and want to go here. <laughs> the same battle. That's funny. <laughs> Now, speaking of energy, I, I've got this portable generator that's so loud. And lame. And so lame. Well, and many of us are lacking in this department. And when you think of all the uh, natural disasters, why aren't we paying attention? So we visited with the folks at Generac. This generator will automatically kick in, whether you're home or you're away, whenever the utility power is cut off. And now there are many options that homeowners can choose as to how much of their home they want to protect. Do they want to have just a few basic things like lights and maybe the refrigerator? Or do they want to run their home as if they'd never left utility power? So you program it some It would depend on the size of the generator that you buy uh -huh, and uh -huh. based on the needs that you have or the size of the home that you have. It's, it's based on the switch gear that connects to your electrical panel, how that might work. But there's a myriad of options out there that we sit down with homeowners and we talk about what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And we can then make some recommendations for them and show them a different price range as well. So what does it run on? That's a great question. Thank you. Um, unlike the portable <laughs> generators that run on it gasoline, It runs on right? fairy dust is what you're going to say. <laughs> it, it, uh, not quite. That would be nice if we could get to that point. It does run on your home's natural gas or liquid propane supply, which you already have coming into your home. And unlike gasoline, right, it's a fuel source that's very rarely ever interrupted. There's always natural gas delivered to your home. Um, so that it ensures that you don't have to run up to the store to try to find gasoline or wait in a line to do that. The generator is always going to run. And because it has a continuous fuel supply, it can run continuously. Many of our customers, uh, after Hurricane Sandy, had written to us and told us the generator ran for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 days continuously until the utility power was restored. Isn't and that their great? lives were unaffected. They were Isn't able to go on amazing? with their normal lives, get the kids up and go to school, function around their home, have their Internet connection working to their outside world, right? Uh, everything still works. You can do laundry, you can bathe, you can cook. Isn't that interesting? So it is important. I mean, only 3% of us stop to think about our need for having some backup system. Yeah, and it, it see, it, to out. me, it seems like a must get it. Uh, you have to have one, yeah. uh, one of these All things. All different price points. So yeah. do think about that. When we come back, we're going to head to the roof and see what's new in shingles. I mean, how often do you look at your roof? You, you got to look you more. Should. You should all and the time. And they've come up with some really interesting new colors and textures to give your your outdoor of your home a little something-something. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Stormer. And after hearing that song, I want to bring out my shoulder padded blazer again. I see a gun going, shake it. Yeah, shake yeah. It. That's and, the 80s uh, baby uh, doll. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Some say the worst decade of all in terms of music. And fashion. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, it's retro, right? That's right. Anyway, we love to kind of uh, put a little smile on your face while we talk about ways to improve your home and improve your life. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, and so we love to go to these different experiences to bring the experience to you because you can't be everywhere. You're busy. Yeah. And there's there's always that time when you're making lists. I mean, I hope that you've been keeping track when you go to our website site, yourhomewizards.com. We, we have there um, posted uh, 52 weeks on how to really get yourself organized and do things throughout the year uh, for your home. But then when you start thinking about doing things, you all of a sudden think, I've got to buy some things. You might want to you know, improve that room or that home. Or what about the roof? 
There's no question. You've got to see what you can do. There's now regional colors that are available because of different topography. It's amazing. It's amazing what's out there. So here we are. Eric and I spent uh, several days going to the Builder Show. It's one of these many nationally uh, huge trade shows where all the brands where you end up seeing are in the big box stores and the showrooms where you want to buy things. Uh, They show them off in advance to kind of get folks like us all jazzed up and they give us a preview. And we like to investigate and see what you think you might want to consider. You know? Yeah. And we went to the Owens Corning booth, the folks that you probably think you of. You would think fiberglass, but no, insulation. no. They do great roofing systems. They do great roofing systems, and it's it's a hickory species with a top coat of aluminum oxide, and it's scratch-resistant. Well, And it's got all these cool things going on. So let's check out what they have at Owens Corning. It's something new with their shingles. Good indication is, is blistering, uh, cracking, shingles blowing off, uh, discoloration. Those are those are uh, easy signs to tell if you're you're you need a new roof, uh, but usually it's it's shingles blown off, they've they've passed their peak and then they're ready to be replaced. And if we wanted to combine solar with shingles, how would we do that? You can. What's popular mostly uh, there's certain areas of the country where solar is very popular. In the West, it's it's popular, but uh, a lot of them are are rack mounted where you install the shingles down and then you put the solar panels above that on a rack. Um, but now there's more and more of the integrated one where it's part of the roofing system. Instead of being, you put the roofing system down and put the racks, you put the shingles down and you integrate it onto the deck, the solar panels, and then you're done. So there's, it's either shingles or solar panel. It's not, not a racking system. Oh, so that's, that's because popular then too. you can replace the roof and not have to remove right. the panels. Right. And then you, of course, have to have the proper flashing so because you're tying the shingles into the, the solar panels. Right. Now, what about fire safety? Because we always are thinking about having a safe roof mm-hmm. as well as an attractive one that mm-hmm. blends in with the neighborhood and, mm-hmm. and speaks to our, our community. Um, what are you guys doing to make the shingles slow down the spread of a fire? Actually, our shingles are all Class A shingles. So Class A, the fire test that you, uh, that you have to have to, in order to get Class A, you're basically fire test approved. And, and uh, there's, there's a test that has to do. You have to put a burning brand on top of a shingle. It's got to burn for a certain amount of time, and I can't remember how much time. But, but our shingles are Class A. There's products out there that are not Class A that you have to either add a retardant to it on top of it or... Um, um, or they just don't meet Class A fire rate. And all every one of every shingle that we make is Class A. Um, and what does that mean exactly? That it'll fire could be on top of the shingles and it will not burn. So we have there's been neighborhoods where you have traditionally say like wood shakes where they've wood shakes are just wood um, and they've burnt. And uh, with ours, it does not. The roof, the roof, the <laughs> roof is on fire. No, 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 no. No, you don't, don't want do that. that. Don't do that. Yeah, no, you know, people really rarely go up and look at their roof, but it's really important because what happens, see, is that you get leaks, then all of a sudden you get the running down the drywall, the ceiling caves Rotting. in. Rot- I mean, it's an important, almost Algae essential growth. thing to deal with, right? You know. But it's the last thing you want to do is climb up on the roof, unless you're my son who sits up there and, like, screams at people. He likes to go up there and scream. Hey, at people. he does a lot. Really? Hey, as really? he's up there, his cars okay. drive by. He's the roof police. He's the roof police. But really, when you look, when you drive around a neighborhood and you see a home that has a beautiful roof, it really does give it a kind of a nice accessory. It, it really is almost like some a beautiful woman who's walking down the street with a hat on. A chapeau, if you will. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, not She's only making that, a statement. And I will say too, if it's the wrong color roof, then the house it's looks really crazy. Tacky, you, know, there's some, you can't really figure out what's going on, but so, then you go, man, the roof's the wrong color. So that's why the Owens Corning folks have come up with this system where it's like region by region. Where they actually looked at the color of the mountains, the stone, how it's blend everything, in. the gray, whatever's there, it kind of gives you that blending ability. So if you're it's not, not gonna right. A, you're not going to have a purple roof. No, God, you're not no. going to have a green roof necessarily, but it might be you know a shade of green gray or something. And then and then another thing too you know occasionally you may want to just poke your head up in there with a flashlight and then oh, turn yeah. the light off in and if you attic. see light shafts coming through you know you got an issue That's if you a can really see great... a rainbow from your attic or unicorns not good no good i mean i love unicorns but and if i you love see rainbows them, you got, you got but if, if you can see them from inside the attic that means that maybe you know yeah someone's the been gnawing <laughs> someone's been munching and crunching and of course you know the cedar splits all, you know, in dry climates and the, That's exactly all right. the different problems. And that, also know. give you a good opportunity to see if you've got the right amount of insulation. If it's below the top of the joists that frame the roof, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, you know, then, then you know that you don't have enough. And if your home is, let's say, 20 years old, right? I mean, chances are a roof is going to last you 
maybe 20 years. But if it's older than that, you probably need a whole new roof, don't you think? You or sure can, do. Absolutely. It's opposed to replacing it yeah, and or, then or repairing people it? People often make the mistake of going with a cheap bid and having new shingles installed over the old ones, which is absolutely the worst thing to do because then the roof gets heavier. It might not be engineered for that additional weight. Mm-hmm. The house can get into some issues with foundation. It just turns, so, it turns you into a So home. here's what you've got to do. If not today, tomorrow, yeah. sometime this week, make a promise, get a flashlight, you have a home, get in your attic with a flashlight, pretend you're a detective. Yeah. Put on your favorite, you know, detective. Nancy Drew. Trench coat. Put on one of those headlamps <laughs> so your hands are free. And and make it fun. And now you're going to basically have a trained eye to like the roofing pros and know that whether, you know, there's some, some sagging issues, some I know. problems. I know. You hear Yeah, it? there it is. It's coming. <laughs> not your, sagging issues. Oh, well, well, not not that, not kind of sagging oh. issues. You also <laughs> want to make sure that, well, that, that the roof isn't bald. No, you, you don't, sure, want to, no, don't want to have that issue. Than a bald roof. Geez, all of a sudden it's gone into, you know, antioxidants and, you know, youth serums That's, for your roof. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. So from what's on top to what's on the bottom, how about flooring? And and while at the builder show, we had to visit with the Armstrong flooring folks because they do everything from real wood floors to vinyl floors. I mean, it started in cork. They started with cork, which Boy, is made a comeback. Takes me back to Hugh Hefner in the, in the Hef <laughs> Mansion back in the seventies. <laughs> really? With the cork Did you floor. spend some time with Hugh? Mm, well, Hef? Let's just say I've You've been around. Yeah, You've looked I've at examined it. it. Well, so here, let's let's find out what's new because uh, there are some DIY products, some laminates, some ways to get the look of, of wood that's excellent for children and pets, you name it. So we, you know, in general, the trends that we've seen over the past couple of years have been more of the darker uh, wood tones, so more your mocha, espresso colors. Um, we're starting to see more trends towards the gray. Um, and you saw that with the coastal living behind me, you have that concrete. Patina. By the way, Eric, she's wearing a gray top. Is She's that a coincidence? All, yeah, no, I think not. I think <laughs> Next, she... we'll come out with purple floors, too, because I'm wearing purple as well. Finally. <laughs> um, and let's see, some other trends. We're seeing wider widths yes. in wood. So you can see this is a 5-inch wide plank. It gives a real rich look, I think. And, and also, yes. can I tell you about wider widths? Wider widths on hardwood flooring has a tendency to cup meaning that it'll either bow this way or, or arch that way. And why is that? But with it, because the moisture can't kind of, it, it, it makes it kind of come up at the ends, right? Because with hardwood flooring, it generally contracts and expands over and over again, which is why you have this gap on the outside of the room. But with engineered flooring, cupping is non-existent. You have much less chance of that to happen, and it's great for environments like here in Vegas, arid climates where you have moisture changes, where there's more moisture, where there's less. Engineered is great for that, yeah, all those types perfect. of environments. I actually am recommending the engineered flooring a lot more than the old hardwood stuff. It's just much easier, and it lasts longer, and it's much less expensive. So the one other thing I wanted to mention is with our American Scrape Line, um, we're doing a really great program this year where we're donating the floors for 35 new homes for Homes for Our Troops. And they oh, build homes nice. for severely disabled veterans. And um, we feel very fortunate to be able to be part of that program this year. So some of the sales um, from American Scrape will go to support those flooring donations this year. Isn't that a great cause? You yeah, know? it's really nice, isn't it? And the reason why it, it applies to, to uh, our disabled vets is because this kind of flooring is scratch-resistant. And for folks that are in a wheelchair. Sure. You know, and my, you know, my mom good. who uses a walker to get in and out of you know, the yeah. house, and it's really nice because it's one level. You know, it makes it easy and safe for people to walk around who can't get around so easily. And I love how they've come up with this look. It's almost like the, uh, the antiqued look. The folks at Armstrong have, have intentionally given it that that kind of a scratched finish. So it and in looks order like to achieve weathered. that, you have to use a scraper and literally scrape off old pieces of wood so it looks like it's been there a hundred years. And they've now designed it and, and uh, engineered it so it's it just you you install it and it looks that way. Already. I just thought of a new purpose for Forrest, your puppy dog. We Don't. could put Forrest to work. Oh, to get, even, he can now help Seriously, to create that weathered look. I've in made the... a grave error, I think. <laughs> he, he kept me up at night again Aww. last night. He's cute. Well, anyway, so in terms of flooring, I mean, what would you say if you're – as you're listening to this and folks are thinking, okay, I want to change out my floor – uh, that that darn home office, you know, it's got pet stains and da-da-da. You know, definitely up 
you know, lift the, the floor, get it out of there. Get the floor out, start over. If, if you do have the pet stains, it's really difficult. Even if you sand, sometimes that smell will still come back from pet urine. I know. So you might as well just lose it, start over again. The engineered flooring is a great solution. It's, it's easy to do yourself. It's relatively inexpensive, mm-hmm. and it looks great, and you don't have to refinish it. So, so I mean, it's really a no-brainer. So we have engineered wood um, in our living room and in our hallway, you know, and it works because we have two old English sheepdogs, sure. and though that isn't getting scratched, you know, by our dogs as much. And I also love the cushion that goes underneath. So yeah, it's it almost feels comp- like you're on an NBA well, like, basketball Like you're on a cloud. Yeah, you're walking right there with the fairy dust. Love it. Anyway, you're listening to Eric Storm or Cindy Doyle, Home Wizards, where we love to improve your home and improve your life. More from the Builder Show and the cool things you want to consider for your home. Like a long, lonely stream, I keep running towards a dream, moving on, moving on. Trying to set the mood for you, you know, thinking about spending some time outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, this is Eric Stromer, my buddy, Hi. and I'm Cindy Dole, and this is Home Wizards, and we love to help improve the spaces you call home, improve your home and improve your life. And one way that we do that is we go to all these different uh, neat trade shows that uh, kind of unveil and launch new products and um, devices, gadgets, materials, things that you may want to think about for your home. For and your and house things time. that you may not. You may go, that was yeah, a dud. That was the worst yeah, was thing I've ever seen. But we're oh going to save God. you time, though. See, we're going to we're your personal shopping right. guide. So let's talk about outdoor living. And uh, we are all about that because isn't that a neat thing to, to extend your the time you spend outside? You know, have and your patio. square footage. All of a sudden you have yes. like, you know, unlimited room. amount of space. Another room. Right. So I know this caught your eye, especially, uh, Eric, when we were at the El Dorado Stone booth. Explain why this was so cool to you. Yeah, this is outdoor cabinetry that's pre-scratch coated with a concrete scratch coat. And normally that's a whole process with stucco that you have to do. It's very labor intensive. But these cabinets show up that way so you can then adorn them with stone, tile, whatever you want to put on. We have these great outdoor cabinets that bolt together, and you can apply the stone literally on the same day. Now, describe that. What do you mean they bolt together? Uh, think about an outdoor uh, cabinet, like an inside of a ca- inside interior cabinet. Now it's been designed for the outside, so it's a lightweight concrete cabinet that actually has been pre-scratched, so you can apply the stone directly to it. Really? So this is a DIY project? Uh, it can be if you're, uh, let's say, a uh, qualified DIY. Okay, hold, hold on. Question. So... You deliver essentially a cabinet or box that's a scratch coat. Correct. That sets on the property. Then you can have any stone person come in and put whatever finish they want. So what's great about it is just imagine, you know, different size cabinets, 48-inch cabinets, 24-inch cabinets, L-shaped cabinets. You bolt them all together into your configuration, and you literally can apply the stone on the same day. Um, What's also great about it is you don't have to pick a certain appliance. You can bring in whatever appliance you want and cut it on site. So now you have all this customization I love that because a lot of times, I mean, you know, it doesn't necessarily fit right, you know, like a glove. You want to have your grill or your sink or whatever tuck right in there, right? right. And maybe change it out. And then the thing that for for the listeners who who don't understand this, when you build stuff with concrete, there's a setup time to create the box. Then to do the scratch coat with the cement that takes a couple of days, it has to set up and cure. Then you do your finish coat, so this saves probably three days of time. At a minimum, yes. And, And any offset in terms of labor cost would be made up there immediately because it's less time. So if this product's a little more expensive than doing it the traditional way, you're saving time, and it ends up being even as all things are concerned. And it's durable, and it's attractive. Right? You got it, exactly. Got and, it. and so what is El Dorado Stone made of, anyway? El Dorado Stone is a lightweight concrete material. Um, it's been um, hand-painted on the surface. That's really what sets El Dorado apart. Uh, multiple layers of oxides kind of infuse the stone and gives you that really natural appearance. And then what's the lead time on getting the boxes delivered? Oh, they, they're they're available. I mean, you literally could have it within a week. Or, so any distributor, or some distributors get it. Uh, also stock. You can pick it up the same day. Right. And the price point for having an outdoor kitchen or outdoor space. Usually, I mean, the, our it... outdoor kitchens. If you're building, let's say a um, uh, eight by eight L shaped uh, kitchen, you're going to save about twenty percent over using CMU block. Wow. So talk about some of the new features, too, because it's not just about cooking. It's about enhancing all the senses. And right now we can hear and see the water and there's right. fire. So what is this? Well, so beyond beyond the kitchen, so we have one more thing. So the kitchens themselves, we have five new what we're calling signature kitchens this year. They've already been pre-designed for people. So if you don't have the 
maybe the design wherewithal to build your own configuration. We've already done that with designers. So there's five kitchens that you could order pre-ready pre to go. So all your cabinets, all your bolts, and you can even select from one of our eight most popular stones, and you can just say, I want the park view, I want the metropolitan kitchen, I want this. And it just comes to your doorstep on pallets, and you're ready to go. And see, the benefit of having kitchen designers create these outdoor spaces is that all the ergonomics have been worked out. Where is the stove compared to the sink, compared to the that's cooktop, right. right? So it makes it a really efficient No, there's a cooking layout. configuration it's a functional, that's been laid yeah, out. Yeah, it's a Absolutely. functional space. Right. But, so here's so the thing that's really exciting for this year is our outdoor um, artisan fire bowls, though. So, again, fire, like you were saying, is always such a great element for the outdoors. And these new um, handcrafted bowls, they literally are um, hand-spun on a lathe um, with a, a lightweight concrete material. And then they are hand-sanded to expose the limestone aggregates. And they, they're just beautiful. And what's nice about it, they come with all the gas components, LP or natural gas, um, and they retail for about $2,500. Oh, my gosh. That's totally affordable. So now you have your little outdoor fireplace. Absolutely. And, and they're, they're just stunning, too. They're just very beautiful. And I think people are going to really be excited about this. And one. I think, you know, Eric is a master of artists and breads. And so he could be whipping up his artisan breads by his artisan fire pit. Finally, a place where I can make pizza outdoors. <laughs> 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 yes, I am an artisan bread maker. You're just an artisan, period. I know, that's all I do. Um, outdoors. Now, isn't that wonderful? A great solution for your outdoor kitchen, outdoor living experience. But what about what's on the floor? I know that you've installed decks for, what, 500 million 507 years? 507 years. And we visited the folks at the Timber Tech booth, and what their product is, it's a, it's a, an alternative decking and railing products with, what, wood and plastic composite. And if PVC. you have the budget to spend a little more, you'll never have to do Low anything again. Low no sanding, yeah. ceiling. Let's listen to this, these guys. We actually install the product outside and check the weathering over time, but we know how to actually simulate weathering inside chambers as well so we're throwing it at extreme freeze temperatures and then heat and you know other type of various tests stomping on it stomping on it scratching it, it. Scratching it <laughs> might, testing the scratch might i the suggest thing. another great place to bring test. it over to your house with the bring kids it. i have three kids <laughs> under 14 and i barbecue. i knew that was coming daily <laughs> children with bicycles and all sorts of other stuff. So Why I, do you have would... children with bicycles on your deck? Because <laughs> we're stromers. <laughs> I don't know. I can't because really. Because they're loving parents. Uh, yeah. They can't say no. Yeah. Okay. But seriously, maybe they could be part of your test group. That I'm would thinking. be good. I have two children as well. All okay, right. Good. Talk about the new colors because we uh, we love the, uh, they all, you always have great you know, grays and earth tones, mm -hmm. but there's something new to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, we actually have a new product called the Terrain Collection, and this is part of the Earth would have Evolutions line, but it's a little bit less expensive than the traditional Earthwood Evolutions. It comes in two colors, silver maple and brown oak, and those look great on basically any house. Now, also for outdoor decking, uh, the folks at Trex um, are out with this veining of lumber, and because of the shortage of, 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 of the tropical forest, they've come up with uh, this new system where basically they are one of the major recyclers of plastic bags. And it becomes, Isn't it amazing to think that, that it's this now your company, decking. yeah, that's the, the exact thing. They recycle the bags and then they create more bags. I think it's a win-win situation. And it becomes a beautiful outdoor surface. So one of the newest colors that introduce at Trex is uh, Tiki Torch. And it's a light burnished amber um, brown that uh, complements the rest of our tropical lineup, Spice Drum and Lava Rock. Well, these are fancy names. This is turning into now like uh, the way that they name paints, right? The creative creative right. input behind how you how you come up with these names and really makes them memorable and stand out. That's obviously. right. You want to conjure up an image where somebody... They, it's an experience. You, 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 it's an experience, and you think about that color, and it reminds you. It kind of sticks with you, mm -hmm. and so people know when you're talking about Tiki Torch, you're talking about Trex. I think you might want to consider other words, though, for women, like you're never fat. Yeah. <laughs> You're always slimming. right. How You're about slimming, beautiful. slimming Diamonds, gray? chocolate, yeah. any of those things would be good names. Just, yeah. you know, we want to put that in for next time for, tech, for tracks. We, we will consider that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, but talk about... Or, or how about the, the name, which I've always loved, of course you're the father, Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so now you've come up with these new colors that are giving us that vibe of being in this outdoor oasis, right? Mm -hmm. You also have some other goodies up your sleeve. Oh, that's correct. we got a whole new uh, decking and uh, railing line. It's called Trek Select. It's, uh, it's our opening price point. So for people that really want to trade up from wood 
uh, that, that want to experience composites. So they've been, they've had that experience with wood where it rot, warps, and splinters. Now, wait, when he says wood, his face is kind of scrunchy. I know, it gets like all scrunchy like and like, 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 it's like wood food. is disgusting. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. But I have to, but listen, before we kind of <laughs> dive this far into the colors and the features, you got to talk about this product, which I think is unbelievable, first of all. I've been doing decks for 100 years in wood. <laughs> and Eric just wins. Just made a bad face. And it's amazing because the, the, the upkeep with this product, and you guys are kind of the pioneers in this industry. I mean, I think really this defines this category. And it's amazing. It cuts like wood. It's made of composite material. What is the material, actually? Yeah, so um, the very first board ever made at Trex was 95% recycled. So what I like to say is uh, green the green aspect is in our DNA. Right. So we're a little bit different than most companies these days that are green washing and they just like to use the tag. Uh, truly, everything we do at Trex, we consider uh, being green. So our product is made of 50% wood and 50% plastic. The wood comes from places like cabinet manufacturers that would be throwing this into the landfill. Sure. Uh, so we're, we're basically taking that scrap, uh, we make it into a fine wood flower, and we recycle it with plastic. The plastic comes from um, large mass retailers, uh, big box home centers. We use those uh, grocery stores. We use those plastic bags, um, and we basically chop them up, and we mix them with the wood, and we extrude it uh, through an extruder just like you would play it. Toss salad, basically. Yeah. Isn't that interesting, though? I love I love what they're doing, and they also use this same technology for hand railing systems, and they embed LED lights, right? Yeah, and they're even they're they're using sawdust yeah. from you know things trash. that have already been made that would be trash with plastic anyway. bags, yeah, it's and a, making it's it genius. beautiful tiki torch colors. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we do want them to come up with a chocolate color, right, or something. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to talk about the new things that you're going to think about or maybe dream about for your windows and your doors. And boy, Eric fell in love with this one door that had that kind of muted glass, that front door. Yes. Wasn't that beautiful? Yes, And these sliding it. glass doors, it was a picture window that was larger than life. And we're going to talk about how they're made and how they're energy efficient and really some, some neat and cool things to consider as you're just kind of putting that, you know, wish list together, All right? Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, we love to improve your home and improve your life. You're listening to Home Wizards. Ah, yes. To be able to see out the windows, to be able to have a great view, right? You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stroll. And so here we are. We're at this builder show in Las Vegas. And did we see a lot of cool things, all the new things and products and and, uh, decorative ideas that you can imagine for your home, for your spaces you call home in the coming year. And so we visited the Colby booth, uh, famous for some really elegant windows and doors. And Eric, you fell in love. Fell in love with several things, a front door and a huge corner window. Let's hear it. Talk about this one window that Eric and I are just loving. We're kind of dying about it. Because... Who wouldn't want to have a great view, right, from inside your living room? It's a series of sliding glass doors that look like they're about, what, eight feet tall? Eight, at least, no, they're more like 12. 12 feet tall, yeah. and there's a secret to this because it looks like it is a picture window. Yes, um, so that's our terrace fan lift and slide doors, and um, you can go up to 60 feet wide with these doors, um, opening up the outdoor patio Uh, to the cooking area. The secret with this door is you can pocket all the doors away into a wall, so it's completely wide open. We're showing a corner here uh, that opens up the whole corner for these beautiful views that people have in their homes. And what is the trim made of? The trim, uh, the exterior is an extruded aluminum clad. We're showing this door in a uh, painted finish, but it looks like copper. So it's a metallic finish. It's a custom color. And the interior is an alder with a dark stain for this really new contemporary look. And then, and then in terms of engineering for a door like that, it, it's obviously something has to be provided for in terms of bracing and and the right engineering and architectural pr- plan to create that ability. Definitely. That cannot be just a, a replacement. It's no, have, not a replacement. Sure. Um, it's got to have the right head structure to it. Um, the installation of the sill, um, the bottom track, is really critical. We provide installation service, so it's really a perfect um, product for a new home. Now, so, Cindy, I don't know how you are about cleaning windows. I'm not always a fan, but I think I would be cool 
with cleaning these windows. If I could have the chance to clean one of these windows in my own life, I would love forever. That's how much I love these doors. The next time we set up the show, we're going to call you and you can come help us clean the glass. Easy on, easy on. That's right. Yes, yes. So, yeah, definitely lots of glass. You'll get a workout with your arm. And then let's talk about the aluminum clad because I think it's a really great option. It looks like a baked-on painted finish that you guys provide already. So, So care is a minimum. The care is minimum. Uh, you still need to maintain and clean. Um, you know, and if you're in a salt area, that would be a concern to really keep up with that. And, and is that powder coated or is it just a traditional paint on it's the It's a aluminum? fluoropolymer finish. Um, it meets an AMA 2605 spec. So in an architect world, um, that's a very high Why you Why you got to show off with all your fancy yeah. letters? <laughs> Going numbers on Wow. Us. Right. That's okay. Well, we're with numbers. It is a 30-year finish warranty. <laughs> really? So, so that's better than paint. I mean, if you were to have your own door painted, this is going to last much longer. Oh, definitely. So so maybe the price point, even though it may be a slightly higher than if you get a raw a door and you do it yourself, yeah. it's a good investment. You'll never have to paint the front door. Well, definitely. You really want to have a factory finish because it's in a controlled environment sure. and um, you get the warranty then. And you've come up with some snazzy colors, I might say, right? Oh, yes. Talk about your palette. Yes, so we do have snazzy colors. We have pumpkin spice, um, which is, of course, orange. I love um, that. And butterscotch, which is yellow. And we have reds, bright reds. You have chocolate. Uh, We have truffle. Oh, Why do you got to take it good. one step again? <laughs> yes, you yes. always have to outdo us. <laughs> truffle. Yes, yes. Truffle Man. or ginger snap. That's pretty good, it's too. Yum. Okay. How about Merlot? We do have Merlot. I knew that was coming. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, that's really a nice option, though, to have it baked on at the factory. I can't tell you how exciting that is because, you know, I don't think people realize. Well, it looks new forever. It basically. looks new forever, and you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks every three or four years to repaint your front door. So the, the life of the door, it really makes Except for the difference in cost. And talk about the tempered glass, because again, this makes it so attractive, but yet you still have your privacy. You know, this is a front door that's right behind. Were you from England all of a sudden? (laughs) (laughs) And you can't see through it, but it gives you the light and it gives you that clean, I don't know, just really neat, exotic feel. Yep. So we've got a frosted matte glass as one of our options. Um, You're right, it gives you the privacy, or privacy as you say. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And uh, it also lets the light through. So you You've got kind of the benefit of both worlds uh, when it comes to your entrance. Yeah, door. no, I love the I love the frosted feel. Now over to another booth, uh, Plaid Gem. Uh, they make some really interesting architectural uh, designy windows. Were you impressed by these? I, mean, I, they... I was. The, you know, they've got amazing grid patterns that mm-hmm. are curved and architecturally unusual, things I haven't seen before. Multiple colors. That's right. And they've even added some bling to the picture. So let's hear from Chris Pickering with Ply Gem. You'll see launches of multiple exterior color styles, multiple architectural shapes, and beautiful grill patterns and exterior casings that allow homeowners to really um, express their personality with, uh, with their home and achieve a unique architectural vision. Yeah, and now that you're saying that I'm looking up at this display right here. It's it's a beautiful configuration. There's a big picture window in the center with like a six light above that and then all these multiple lights everywhere. It's something I've never seen and it seems unusual. So this it is almost the kind looks of, like lattice. Yeah, you it's know, the it's kind of thing the kind of thing that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So there are many ways that you can use the grill patterns within a window to achieve a specific look. Um, you know, prairie style home, you want to get very vertical grill patterns, so it, it, it accentuates the height of the window. Um, when you get into more colonial styles, you get more of that simulated divided light style with the grill. So we try to educate people about how do you use those different styles, those different features, in order to achieve that architectural vision. It really is nice because now it isn't just a window, it's almost like a piece of art, isn't it? Right, and, and, and it is a piece of art, and it is something that helps express, you know, kind of your, your own personality in your home. What we're launching today is our signature color series. Um, Which one's that? Okay, so our signature color series is over here on the wall. Um, 38 different standard color patterns as well as 11 what we call our radiance options which incorporate a metallic flake. And what's great about those is it adds some drama to the exterior of the window because as um, the sunlight changes or your artificial light outside the house changes, um, it catches that metal flake a little bit differently and it really creates, you know, a, a, a little bit of a changing look as it goes throughout the day. You mean a little bit of bling is what you're saying. Absolutely. So <laughs> I've got a beautiful biparting patio door here next to us um, that has a black cherry finish with that metallic flake. And when you see that in the morning time, it's got a very burgundy look to it. It changes to purplish midday and gets almost black as That's it goes through. That's fun. The- it's almost like we have a mood ring on our house. Mm-hmm.
And it, as it changes through the day, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's really beautiful it, it was and, unusual, and I liked it. You know, you really do see the light characteristic change. You know, every time the sun shifts its position, it's kind of interesting. It's I think. gorgeous. Yeah. Now, also at that booth, we we walked over to this other area. I mean, siding and trim on your home. If you are at risk of termites, I mean, you know what we're talking about. It can be a bad, bad scene. But uh, these folks have come up with something that is the alternative to rotting and any of those kind of concerns. And one of the challenges with trim in real wood. It rots. You have to paint it a lot. There's just a lot of negative things. With cellular PVC trim, it acts just like wood. You can work with it like wood. It cuts, it miners, it nails, it screws, it routes. It does everything just like wood, but you have a lot less maintenance than you do with regular wood. And then it comes in, in uh, standard colors or a primed surface? Actually, huh? it, it comes in white. Yeah. And then it, you can paint it whatever color you'd like. Or you can leave this white or as your finish. Or you can finish. leave it that white as your finish. Because it looks yeah. almost like a nice semi, almost flat to semi-gloss. Well, that's because it holds paint better than other trim products. Yeah, it does. That is absolutely true, <laughs> without, without question, yeah. And it comes in both smooth and a wood grain. So depending whether you want to have a smooth look oh, or, or a wood grain or a textured look, you can get either. So and, and so termites aren't attracted to this. They are not attracted to this. It's made from PVC. Uh, yeah, they are not attracted to this. So isn't that interesting? I mean, there's so many solutions for your home, and we so and so so enjoyed being your personal shopping guide. And uh, go to the website, and you can see all the pictures and all the different opportunities to just kind of enhance your home. Yeah, and we hope you feel more informed. And, boy, we sure do. I think yeah. we learned a, a tremendous amount. And, and some of these new products, especially this trim stuff that will never rot, is such a great thing to think about buying. For I mean, there home. are so many solutions. It really it feels that uh, manufacturers are now not only about energy efficiency, right, mm-hmm. Customizing the look so we feel like we have a beautiful look, whether it's great new shingles that have a neat color that blends in, but also technology. So your thermostat, you can turn on or turn off the heat and the cooling system while you're in your car driving home. And I love these aluminum 